Hello learners, uh, today we are going to understand a very very important topic that is social change. In this session we are going to understand about uh, what is what do we mean by social change and what are the factors that affect the social change. As you would know that social change is the focus for all the sociologists and why is that so? Because the social change takes place in the society and that impacts the society in such a way that you will see its impact uh, on a very larger scale. Therefore, it is a very very important factor which the sociologists consider. Another one thing which is uh, important when we talk about social change is that, that this uh, social change is so complex at the same time uh, it is so important for each one of us to understand therefore it becomes all the more necessary to understand how and why social change takes place. Now you would see change happening around you every time. You would whenever uh, you see a change happening it comes in your mind that change is dynamic in nature. It ha happens every moment each time. But does all the changes comes into the category of a social change? No. Why? Because social change refers to those changes which only implies to bringing changes in the social structure and the social interactions. Let us now look into various definitions which have been given by various sociologists. As said by Davis that social change is nothing but change in the structure and function of the society. By this we mean that we all know society is uh, arranged hierarchically. We have different structures and these structures have come into being because of you know various class and various castes which exist in our society. So therefore when we say that this change is in the structure and the function of the society by that we mean that whenever the change happens that an individual moves, moves from one ladder of the society to the other it comes under the category of social change. Another very important aspect of social change what uh, what uh, McIver and Page also highlighted that social change also refers to the change in the human relationships. You know whenever the social change takes place, whenever an individual or a group moves from one ladder of the society to the other, what happens that, that there is a change in the human relationship. Suppose one person is promoted uh, onto a higher level. then she takes greater responsibilities. With those responsibilities she forms different relationships at various levels. So this, this change has been brought about only because she has moved up on the ladder of uh, professional growth and hence it has bring forth the social change. Another aspect of social change is that it is the change in the ways and doing and thinking of the people which means social change is just not limited to change in the structures of the society. It also uh, implies that social change occurs when there is a change in the attitudes of the individual. Whenever uh, you know social change takes place you may conclude that now the social change is made up of the change in the thinking process, in the ideas, the values and also change in the structure of the society. So this will all come into the ambit of social change. Now you know uh, uh, when you say that this will all come into the ambit of social change then you must also differentiate that any change which is social, is na social in nature is not an individual change. Suppose today uh, you decide that I will study 8 hours more than yesterday. This is an individual change which is brought 
which is to be brought in by yourself this will not have an impact on the society so therefore all the changes which are happening around us does not come into the category of social change individual changes are not social changes another thing which you must also keep in mind that all these changes are temporary in nature because our societies are dynamic they keep changing so therefore nothing is permanent not even the change so whenever we uh, talk about even about social change social change can also a major social change it can also change when the society progresses yeah, and this uh, you may ascertain from when you compare the ancient society with the present day society you would find that the both the societies are very very different in terms of even the social interactions so therefore you may conclude that the social change is also not a permanent change it keeps on changing because it takes place in the society and not in the individual now let us understand the various characteristics of social change uh, the first point that the change itself is social in nature as i had already discussed uh, before that it is not a change which is which is coming in an individual it is a change which is coming in a larger group of uh, of the society and it is a change which is coming in the social interactions how we understand each other and even in the social structure so this change itself is social in nature another point whenever the social change takes place it is universal also it takes place everywhere it uh, be it a modern society or a primitive society an industrialist society or a agricultural based society the social change is inevitable it is present everywhere but you may find that the rate of the change uh, may differ from each uh, from society to society for example you may find that in a rural society or in in the rural areas the rate of change is slower in comparison to the urban societies but it is universal it takes place everywhere because we are all individuals we constantly interact with each other we get lot of information from outside so therefore we keep adapting and changing another thing is that change is continuous it will not happen that today the change has taken place and tomorrow it won't change is continuous in nature it will keep happening and this continuity is also because of many advancements which are taking place also uh, for example uh, there are many technological advancements now taking place so because of that what has happened there is a continuous influx of information and ideas and we can interact with people not only uh, within our vicinity within our very close boundaries but which we can interact with people all around the world so it has led a uh, our thinking it has uh, helped us in broadening our thinking so therefore there is a, because of that continuous interaction there is a continuity in the social change which is maintained but of course the fourth characteristics which says that it is not uniform it cannot be uniform also because as i said that you know changes depend on where it is taking place it also depends upon the motivation of the individuals whether they would want to have a change or not it depends upon the education level of the social group how educated they are the more educated uh, a social group is the more uh, the the pace of the social change will be much much higher as compared to where the education is low similarly in the rural areas the pace will be slower in comparison to the urban areas so therefore it is not uniform in nature that can differ from the different uh, from situations to situation so you may find that uh, in cities for example you may find that we are using very advanced technologies but maybe in the rural areas the 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 social groups the social members are still not very confident in terms of adapting to those technologies 
So whatever changes which is going to happen is slower in the rural areas as compared to the urban areas. Another thing is that we cannot predict the change. It is very uncertain. When I say when it, uh, it is very uncertain, it, it is because there is no uniform law of social change. If we say that, okay, if uh, this intensity of wind will come, this much will be the impact of um, that particular calamity on the individual, you cannot, that, that is too uncertain. It is also because each of the social group have a different level of understanding. How, uh, say for example, when the tsunami came, tsunami when it came, it not only ruined the, uh, uh, the you know, the, uh, what do you say, the, um, it doesn't, it, it didn't even uh, ruin the professions and uh, the agricultural land, but it also ruined the psychological aspects of the learners, uh, of the individuals. So therefore, it is important that we must understand that this social change is will not be, you cannot uh, ascertain that this will be the impact of social change on a particular group. And also a different group of individual may react to a social change in a very, very different way. And very important is this that whenever we see a social change, it cannot be the result of only one factor. For example, now when you see more women into the workforce, right? So you cannot say that education is only the one factor. Now they are only getting education, therefore they are coming into uh, the workforce. That is one of the factor. The other factor is that women are now more aware of their rights. Now even the families of the um, girl children, they are also, you know, promoting their children to study. So therefore, the, the, the change the, which we see, it is not only the result of only one factor. It is a, there are multiple factors which interplay to bring about one social change. So you can say that, and that whenever you would find, you would see a social change, it does not come uh, in a month. It will take some time, but it is for sure that these changes will keep on happening because of the continuous nature of the social change. Now, let us now examine one more important aspect of the social change that from where does this social change originates from? As you could see, there could be two sources. One is exogenous sources and endogenous sources. When you say exogenous sources, they are those sources which come from outside of the society. They are not present within the society. So they are basically external factors. And endogenous uh, sources are those sources which are actually present within the society, within that particular social group. Now let me take an example to explain. For example, exogenous factors. All the calamities, all the physical calamities which come, they come as a exogenous factors because they are not present within that particular social group. So they will impact to a particular social group from outside and there will be a long term impact on that. Similarly, if you talk about endogenous, uh, you know, factors, they will be the factors which are within the society. For example, uh, if uh, more number of schools are opened, opened in the rural areas, it will provide more access to education to all. Hence, the uh, girl education would increase. So this increase in the number of uh, girl children going to school and hence bringing in the change in the society, it is endogenous change. So therefore, uh, the changes can be both exogenous as well as endogenous. Now, let us understand the various factors that impact the social change. The one important, the first and foremost important factor which impacts the social change is the demographic factor. 
when you talk about demographic factors though the, this demographic is made up of two words one is demo plus graphic which means demo means people graphic means line so which means these are the factors which are associated with the people of that particular social group now when you talk about demography of a particular social group it will include both the qualitative as well as the quantitative aspect of that particular social group the quantitative aspect will indicate the you know what are the thinking process the genetic make by makeup what are their physical capabilities so they are all uh, you know these qualitative uh, component of the demographic factors it basically uh, comprises of all the genetic factors which a society uh, takes from their own previous generation so actually uh, you do not have much role to play because we cannot uh, change the genetics of a particular social group but of course some environment can be provided from external environment can be provided which can improve the social uh, thinking of the social group now when you talk about in the terms of the quantitative aspect of the demographic group that talks about in terms of number so when a social group when a particular social group is more in number how it impacts the social change right so this particular aspect is known as the demographic factor and this is how it will impact and bring about changes in the society now the one another important aspect is the technological aspect see the technological aspect uh, we all live in a society now which is uh, continuously growing in terms of improving in terms of uh, technology if you um, go back 10 years back then you would find that uh, you never had such smart phones in our hands as we have it now now this technological change this technological advancement also impacts the the social change how for example now because of more techno number of uh, modern technologies now we have access to online learning now we have access more access to education so there is more participation of the social group in education and you would know that education is a main uh, is a main agent to bring about a social change so when this technological uh, um, technology changes the access to education comes that impact that automatically improve the uh, the social interactions of the individuals and even how it, it also improve the social structure for example when people will become more educated then people from the lower strata of the society will you know will be uh, moved to the upper strata of the society so that will bring in a lot of change in the social structure so this is one aspect another aspect when you talk about change in the technology and how it brings in social change is also uh, technology is just not the means for getting education technology is also uh, <clears throat> the means for providing a lot of uh, liberation how we have access to when technology uh, you know provides lot of access to information because of that there are so many misconceptions there are so many uh, you know uh, ill factors which are prevailing in the society they can be improved upon we can understand what is wrong we can make a better perspective about what is correct and what is incorrect so therefore technology does play a important role in terms of bringing the social change another thing is environmental now we are all social beings and we live in a society and we are also you know have a very very close relationship with our environment so whenever there is any change in our environment what happens that it directly impacts our lives for example if we get you know a tsunami or a heavy rainfall or a flood or a famine what happens ultimately it changes the lifestyle of the individual 
when whenever uh, whenever there is a drought condition in a particular area then entire thing right from food to education to even their um, you know living in that particular area becomes a struggle so that brings in a lot of social change in terms of that the the population from that area they move from one that place to the other place and then they have to make and adapt themselves to the new surroundings and then have to bring in a lot of social change so that is also one aspect another important and the last aspect is the psychological factor when individual move from one place to another or when suppose when a person even in the organizational setup if if a person gets uh, and go from one position to another the person has to adapt and adopt both to, uh, to the demands of that particular area and he, uh, and uh, that individual also has to forego many things which uh, she has learnt it from her family so there is a continuous adjustment so therefore these psychological factors also impacts the ways of social changes take place now let us understand one thing that as teachers we are the important agents in bringing about social change because as teacher not only can we act as a role model for whatever change we want to see we can also increase the consciousness about the other cultures now when this consciousness about other cultures increases what happens there is more acceptability and there when there is more acceptability there is more adaptability so adaptation to social change becomes much more easier so therefore it is important that we increase that consciousness and also since social change is associated with the change in the attitudes so it is it is important that whenever the change is about to be brought in either due to the technological change or due to the environmental factor then we must accept that change with a positive attitudes and develop positive skills to sail through that particular social change so as a teacher it is our role it is our duty that we develop these positive attitudes amongst our learners so with this i think you we have uh, now completed uh, our understanding about what social change is and how social change is takes place and what are the various factors which impact social change so with this i thank you very much